Hi all and welcome to this video from the Transition Year Higher Level Maths Algebra Revision Module Series. This Algebra Revision Module has been put together to help you to revise all Algebra topics from the Junior Cert Higher Level course and to help you as you move into the Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths course. Today's lesson we're going to solve equations and what I would advise is if you have not yet revised uh, quadratic equations that you do so before looking at this video as some of the things that we learned there are going to be used in these examples. Today we're going to focus on how to solve simple linear equations, equations with fractions which turn into linear equations and equations with fractions that turn into quadratic equations. So let's look at our first example. So this is simple linear equation. So the question is solve the following equation. So just to keep in mind that an equation will contain an equals. Uh, when we have an equation, we will generally be asked to solve or to find a value. Um, if there is no equals, that's when we have an expression and we are asked a number of different questions with regards to expressions. But when we're asked to solve, to get an answer, we'll need an equal. So in order to find that x equals a number, we have to have an equals given. So let's go through this. So the first thing we need to do is multiply out this bracket. So we have two times x plus three. So we'll get two x plus six equals 18 minus five x. So we want to get all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other. So let's move the 5x across and the plus 6 over this way. Okay, so remember the rule when we're working with equations. When we bring something across the equals, we're going to do the opposite with it. So we had a minus 5x, so when we bring it across, it becomes a plus 5x equals 18. We had a plus 6, now it's a minus 6. So now we have 2 plus 5 is 7x equals 12. So x equals 12 divided by 7. So 7x, we're multiplying the 7 and the x. So when we bring it across, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to divide. Okay. Alternatively, you can divide both sides by 7. And then these two sevens cancel, leaving me with x equals 12 over 7. So both methods, absolutely perfect. Absolutely fine to leave your answer in a fraction. Um, if they do ask you for one decimal place, two decimal places, then it would be a good idea to convert it. Um, if you're not asked, I would generally leave it in the form of a fraction. But for anyone who likes their decimals, this works out as 1.714. Okay, so next example. So again, a, uh, a second simple linear equation. Um, probably not as straightforward. What I mean by simple is, is I suppose there's no fractions in them. Um, so solve the following equation. So just like the last question, we need to uh, multiply out the brackets. So really what's here that we don't write is a 1. So it's like we're multiplying minus 1 by the whole bracket. Or you can think of it as we're making everything in that bracket uh, where we're changing its sign or we're, sub we're multiplying it by a minus. So what we end up with is minus x plus 3. Similarly here, we'll have a minus x minus 2 uh, equals 2x minus 2. Okay, so I'll just change that so we know that it's 2. So just like in the last example, we want to get all the letters on one side and all the numbers on the other. So my minus x will stay, my other minus x will stay, and this 2x will come across giving me a minus 2x equals. I have a minus 2 that's already there. The plus 3 came across and became minus 3, and the minus 2 came across and became a plus 2. Okay, so... When I clean this up, I have a minus 1x, minus 1x, minus 2x gives me minus 4x equals minus 2, minus 3 gives me minus 5, plus 2 gives me minus 3. So x then gives me minus 3 over minus 4, which can be cleaned up to simply 3 over 4. Again, if you prefer to work with dividing both sides by minus 4, we would still get the same answer. 
OK, so just remember a minus over a minus will give me my plus. If you want to turn that to decimal, then it's 0 0.75. So example three then, this is an equation with a fraction, uh, well actually with multiple fractions. And what I've said about in brackets is linear and that means that when we get rid of the fractions, we will end up with a linear equation. Okay, so let's see. So when we have fractions, I suppose people in general don't like fractions. And when we have an equation, we can get rid of the fractions. So I suppose the question to ask yourself is, you know, what do we have? We have our fraction and what don't we want? Well, we don't want the fraction. So how do we get rid of the fraction? So the way we get rid of the fraction is by using the denominator. So if I just give you a little bit of an example over here, just as an aside, if I have a quarter of a pizza, I need four of those to make a full pizza, which gives me four over four or equals one. OK, if I had one tenth of a pizza, I'd need 10 pieces to make it whole. So that bottom line, the denominator is basically helping us because it's telling us basically what will I need to multiply it by to get rid of the fraction. So if I multiply the whole way across by four, I'll get rid of the first fraction, but I won't get rid of the other two. So I can multiply the whole way across by four. I will still have my three and my two. So then I multiply by three. And then I have to multiply by 2. But that's doing three sets of multiplication. So in order to speed it up, we look for the lowest common multiple of 4, 3, and 2. And that's 12. So that would be the same thing as a common denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply each piece of my equation by 12. So when I multiply it by 12, some bits will cancel. 4 goes into 12 3 times, 3 goes into 12 4 times, and 2 goes into 12 6 times. So what I'm left with is 3 by 3x minus 1 plus 4 by 2x equals 6 by 5. So something very similar to what we had in the last example. So let's multiply it out. Get 9x minus 3 plus 8x equals 30. Just like before, we're going to get all the letters one side and the numbers the other. So here we get 17x equals 30 plus 3. So 17x equals 33. So x equals 33 over 17. So again, if you want to write that as a decimal, it would be x equals 1.9. For one, but leaving it as a fraction is absolutely fine. So example four. So here we have another equation with fractions, but this time, if you notice the denominators, uh, two of them contain um, variables. So they will have an algebraic denominator. So there's an X in the bottom line, basically. Same method, though, that we're going to use as we had the last time. We want to get rid of the fraction. So in order to get rid of an x plus 1, well, 1 over x plus 1, I would multiply this by x plus 1. Similarly, to get rid of 4 over 2x minus 1, I would multiply it by 2x minus 1. Um, to get rid of 5 over 3, I would multiply by 3. So what I'm going to have to look for, just like in the last example, was my lowest common multiple of x plus 1, 2x minus 1, and 3. Now, the first check then is to see, well, could I factorise any one of those? So, x plus 1, there's nothing in common except 1, so that would be of no help. 2x minus 1, well, there's nothing in common except 1. Again, it would be of no help. And 3 is a prime number, so it cannot be factorised. So, therefore... The lowest common multiple will be 3 by x plus 1 by 2x minus 1. Okay, so that's what we're going to multiply each piece of the equation by. So let's start working through that. So this is going to be multiplied by 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. The x plus 1 and the x plus 1 will cancel. Here, 3 by x plus 1, 
2x minus 1. 2x minus 1's cancel. And here we'll have 3 by x plus 1 by 2x minus 1. And the 3's will cancel. So what that gives me is 3 by 2x minus 1 by 1 plus 3 by x plus 1 by 4 equals 5 by x plus 1, 2x minus 1. So now we need to clean it up. So I have 6x minus 3 plus 4 by 3 is 12. So we get 12x plus 12 equals 5. We need to multiply out these brackets. So I'm just going to do it up here just to save a bit of space. We'll have x by 2x minus 1 plus 1, 2x minus 1. So 2x squared minus x plus 2x minus 1, 2x squared plus x minus 1. So I have 2x squared plus x minus 1. And here we're going to clean up. I have 6x plus 12x, so that's 18x. And I have minus 3 plus 12, which is plus 9. And that's all going to equal 10x squared plus 5x minus 5. So in the previous examples, what we've done is we've got all the letters on one side and the numbers on the other. However, that was because it was a linear equation. Now, because we have an x squared, we actually have a quadratic. And in order to solve a quadratic, we bring everything over to the left-hand side. So we get minus 10x squared plus 18x minus 5x plus 9 plus 5. And that all equals 0. So my quadratic is minus 10x squared plus 13x plus 14 equals 0. Now, we need to solve this. Um, the easiest way to solve it would be then to make a positive 10x squared, which would make this negative 13x and a minus 14 equals 0. If you'd like to use the guide number, but it will be much easier for you to use the minus b formula. I'm not going to do it out in full here, but the answer is that you get our x equals sorry 20 positive 20 and x equals minus 7 okay so it is possible to use the guide number but usually with numbers this big um working out the factors of 140 that will give you minus 13 it can um it can be quite difficult but just in case anybody is doing that the guide number here is minus 140 and the factors are minus 20 and a plus 7. Okay, but I wouldn't be trying to work out um, quadratics like that with the guide number um, unless you see the factors pretty much straight away. You're better off to spend the time using the minus b formula than just sitting looking at the sum trying to find the factors. So in this case we get two answers for our x because it had ended up like a quadratic.